My name is Patty Maas, and I am a professor at MIT, at the MIT Media Laboratory. I am very interested in how generative AI can be used to help people and to perform um, at a higher level, basically. So I'm not so much interested in how we can achieve AGI or general AI and maybe match or surpass people's intelligence. But instead, my work is all focused on supporting people in um, performing at a better level. So we're very interested, for example, in how AI can motivate people to learn, how AI can help people with behavior change. If, if somebody has a bad habit and you want to change that habit. So we think that there's a lot, a lot of opportunities for AI to really help people develop certain skills. We are very interested in how AI systems can help motivate people. And so we built a system called Future You, where you upload a picture of yourself and you also tell the system what some of the goals are that you want to accomplish in your life. Like, I think I want to be a biology teacher when I grow up. And the system then generates a hypothetical future you or future version of you and then you can chat with this virtual you and ask like do you like being a biology teacher what is a good thing about being a biology teacher what are some not so good things and the system draws on all the knowledge that chat gpt has about professions like being a biology teacher and so on to give people some realistic um, uh, information, but very concrete information about what it's like to be a biology teacher, live in a city, etc. So this really helps people with um, sort of uh, acting in the interest of more long-term goals. And it helps people with changing their behavior so they're not so short-term focused. Um, but they really sort of see like this future of them as a biology teacher who's very successful, etc. And they can really focus more on uh, basically how to get there. So that's what our results uh, show, basically. So the current uh, AI systems, AI models like ChatGPT, they mostly operate in a question and answer style. So the student asks a question and then the AI gives a long answer typically. And we think we, that we have to revisit this and uh, create AI systems that still have all this knowledge, but use it in a way to support the person in learning a certain skill, more like a Socratic teacher um, where the teacher asks key questions that help the student maybe gain an insight and so on or change their model of a particular area. So we think that there's an opportunity for much more sophisticated forms of interaction than people asking the questions and AI always having all the answers. Um, it has to become more of a collaboration where the ultimate objective is that the student learns if that if it's a student um, type of relationship where the student internalizes the skills and really develops the skills themselves with uh, the help of the system rather than the system giving them all the answers I think there's huge ethical issues with AI that have to be resolved. Um, many different ones, actually. One is uh, the data it is trained on. Not only is that data biased, 
but it's also often stolen data, data that, is, uh, that was produced by people where they are not crediting um, these systems. Um, AI is using a lot of energy in um, uh, its production, so it's actually contributing to global warming. Um, AI is, uh, again, sort of um, uh, maybe being introduced in a way that um, some people have more access to it than others. The models are primarily, for example, trained in the United States based on uh, US types of lang well, language, English and culture and so on. So there's just um, many, many <laughs> problems that have to be resolved for me to really feel good about um, sort of saying, yes, I am an AI researcher and I think the impact of AI on society is positive. I do think that um, virtual reality has potential in education because you can make a certain learning situation be very real even though maybe the cost of failure is um, not there in uh, virtual reality. For example, uh, I can learn about doing surgery <laughs> in virtual reality and it's much safer than doing that on a real person, of course. I think it has a lot of advantages in that it is very realistic and so it really teaches you about the actual situation of, say, being in an emergency room as a surgeon and so on. But again, it is a simulation, so there is no real cost of failure or uh, not doing the right thing. So. I foresee that um, AI and virtual reality will come together more so that you can have AI tutors that teach you in virtual reality about certain topics. Right now, again, the AI models that we use, they just, you give them text mostly. Now you can also give pictures and they give you text back, but it will be more like a conversation with another person who can point at things and say like, no, that's not how you should be uh, cutting the pers person for this surgery. You have to like cut over there or whatever. So I think the two will come together, the um, sort of smarts to the extent that you can call it that of AI with the more hyper-realistic environment and more situated learning of virtual reality. When I started studying computer science in my first year at the university at Brussels, um, I, feel, I felt like I didn't belong there because there were many, especially guys there, that seemed so much more confident and so on. I learned that even though all these guys seemed to like know about programming and I had never done it and they were so confident, that in the end I was able to do well and do as well or even better than most of the guys. And so I think um, what they taught me is that learning is not just and, and doing well in a learning environment. It's not just about having the opportunity to pick up some knowledge and some skills, but I think uh, thinking about the emotional state of the learner is important also and how can you motivate them how can you encourage them to have grit how can you help them see their future self who's successful in a certain area even though right now things may be hard so i would argue that um, we have to pay more attention to all of these secondary things because I think they matter a lot in ultimately people doing well in uh, education and reaching their goals.